section 8.6 is called logarithmic differentiation. This should be a pretty quick section, I think. Uh, let's just go right to the definition of logarithmic differentiation. It's a method used to find the derivative of complicated functions. These are usually functions that involve products, quotients, and powers. So, for example, we're going to do this a little bit later. Imagine actually taking the derivative of this. I mean, gosh, I suppose you could use quotient rule, and on the top you'd have product rule. It would really be scary. But there's a way to do it much easier than that by using logarithmic differentiation. Here's the three steps. Step one, take logarithms of both sides of the equation. Step two, differentiate implicitly with respect to x. And step three, solve the resulting equation for y prime. So let's try this out, we'll do a few examples. That's it. Uh, so as I said, this example looks extremely difficult to take the derivative of. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the logarithm of both sides. Now the first question you might have is, well, what base logarithm? Should it be common base? Should it be uh, base 6, base 8? Well, this e gives you a pretty good hint that you're probably going to be taking the natural logarithm. And in fact, it turns out in calculus that's almost always what you're going to do. It's almost always going to be best to take the natural logarithm of both sides. So we've got the natural logarithm of y equals the natural logarithm of this whole thing. Do I really have to write it? Yes, I guess I do. So I'm just rewriting the exact question we started with. Now remember, the nice thing about logarithms is you can expand them. So yeah, you're going to end up with a longer statement, but it's going to be a statement that's easy, much easier to take the derivative of. So again, I'm not going to do any differentiating yet. I'm just simplifying this. So we have three pieces here. We have the e to the x, we have the square root of x squared plus 1, and we have this bit down here. So we're going to write each one of those as a natural logarithm. So we have the natural logarithm of e to the x plus the natural logarithm of x squared plus 1 to the 1 half power, right, because it's square root, minus the natural logarithm of x squared plus 2 cubed. Okay, should we take the derivative of both sides? Not yet. There's still a few things we can do. You know what we can do in this first one? We can actually just simplify this. What is the natural logarithm of e to the x? Remember, this is like e, the base here is e, e to the what equals e to the x? Well, e to the x equals e to the x. So this bit right here, this first term, is just equal to x. What can you do in the second term here? You can move this power out to the front, scuttle it to the front, right? So x plus 1 half times the natural logarithm of x squared plus 1 minus can move this 3 out front too. So 3 times the natural logarithm of x squared plus 2. Okay, now we're ready to take the derivative. And we're going to do it implicitly in terms of x. So uh, first thing we're going to do is take the derivative of the natural logarithm of y. When we take uh, the derivative of natural logarithm, it's 1 over whatever this amount is, so 1 over y. But we're doing this implicitly, so it's y prime after. Equals derivative of x is just 1 plus, okay, so just a constant, natural logarithm, so we go 1 over x squared plus 1, and we have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, so the derivative of x squared plus 1, which is 2x, minus 3 is a constant, uh, natural logarithm, so 1 over x squared plus 2, again we move to the inner function and take the derivative and multiply by 2x. Okay, we've got some simplifying to do here. On this side, we could have y prime over y equals, all right, uh, we've got 1 plus, now here we have a 2 on the bottom and a 2 on the top, so those cancel. So I believe all we're left with is x over x squared plus 1 minus, we've got 3 times 1 times 2x, well that's 6x over x squared plus 2. Okay, that's basically it. Now what we have to do is we have to isolate the y prime. Well, that's very easy. All we have to do is multiply both sides by y. So we get y prime equals y times all of this. 1 plus x over x squared plus 1. It's a plus. Minus 6x over x squared plus 2. And the last thing we do is, and it's a bit of a drag, but hey, this did save us a lot of time doing it this way, is where it says y, we write in what y is equal to. Here's what y is equal to right there. 
got to rewrite all that for the y. So y prime equals, now instead of writing y, I write the original question, which was e to the x square root of x squared plus 1 all over x squared plus 2 all cubed, and we're multiplying by this same amount. We don't have to redo anything here. We'll just rewrite that. And this is going to be your final answer. I mean, it's still a pretty horrifying derivative, but finding it wasn't nearly as difficult as it would have been if we had tried to do it uh, without logarithmic differentiation. Okay, just one last point. I'm not going to make a big deal of this in this course. In fact, I think you can probably just take it for what it's worth right now and just forget about it for this year. But I'm sure it'll show up next year and you'll have to be a little more rigorous about it. So I will mention this. If you have a function that is negative for some values of x, then you can't just take the logarithm of both sides, right? Because the natural logarithm of y would not be defined in that case. Remember, when we're talking about logarithms, the argument has to be positive. So if there's some values that are negative, you can't just slap a negative in front of it and say it'll work, because you can't take the logarithm of a negative value. But we can always write the absolute value of y is equal to the absolute value of f of x, and then use the formula from the last lesson we learned, which is that the derivative of the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x is equal to 1 over x. Confused? I bet you are. Okay, let me try to explain this with an example. And as I said before, you don't really even need to worry about this. So you look at this question, you're like, whoa, this looks like a crazy question. I think this might be a good uh, question to use logarithmic differentiation with. So you might think that all you have to do, just like we did before, is take the natural logarithm of both sides. Natural logarithm of y equals natural logarithm of the cube root of x cosine x over x squared minus 1. And I'm telling you that for this year, I'll be okay with that. But next year, I would imagine you're going to have a little trouble if you try to just do that. Do you know why? Because this amount right here can actually be a negative amount, right? You're taking the cube root, and your cube root could definitely be a negative amount. And remember, that would mean that we would have an argument of this natural logarithm that's negative, and that's just not allowed. Now, you might be saying, well, why didn't we have to worry about this before? Because if you look down at this question, there's no way that this function on the right-hand side here, there's no way it can be, uh, can be negative. x squared plus 2, that's definitely a positive amount. So when you cube that, that's definitely a positive amount. When you take the square root of something, it's definitely a positive amount. When you raise e to um, some power, it's definitely a positive amount. There's no way to get a negative amount here. So in that, this case, we can just slap a natural, natural logarithm on both sides, no worries. But in this question, we have this issue of that this one could be negative, and then we wouldn't be able to put a natural logarithm here. So this is where we use this fact right here. What we could do is just throw some absolute value signs on both sides of the original question. So we could say that the absolute value of y is equal to the absolute value of all this. Okay, so actually before we take the natural logarithm, sorry about this, this is probably going to really annoy you, we're going to uh, simplify this first. So we're going to keep the y on this side, the absolute value of y, and on the other side we're going to have the absolute value of x times the absolute value of cosine x divided by the absolute value of x squared minus 1. And all of this is going to be raised to the 1 third power. So again, I'm not taking the derivative, we're not doing natural logarithms yet or anything, I'm just simplifying. Okay, so now I can actually take the natural logarithm of both sides. So we get the natural logarithm of y, or absolute value of y, is equal to, so we're going to write a natural logarithm of this side, but we could scuttle the one-third down. So let's do that. We have one-third times, and now let's expand all this. Rather than writing the natural logarithm of all this, let's do three different natural logarithms. So it would be the natural logarithm of absolute value of x, plus, since it's multiplied right, natural logarithm of the absolute value of cosine x, minus, since it's divided, natural logarithm of absolute value of x squared minus 1. And now a wonderful thing happens. Do you see here, the absolute value signs will disappear when you take the derivative of the natural logarithm of an absolute value. It just becomes 1 over x. So it's like the absolute value signs didn't even exist in the first place. So I know it makes the whole process seem a bit uh, unnecessary, but if you're being very rigorous about this, it is necessary. I'm just not going to stress about it this year. Okay, so here we go. We're going to implicitly differentiate this. 
So first of all, uh, the natural logarithm of absolute value of y is equal to 1 over y, but this is implicit, so we have to multiply it by y prime. Equals, 1 thirds a constant, so we'll put that there, and then we'll put the rest of this all in brackets. So the next piece we're looking at is the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x. Well, that's just 1 over x. And it's, this is in terms of x, so we don't have to put x prime or anything like that. Plus, uh, okay, chain rule here. Outer function is natural logarithm, which means it's 1 over cosine x, no longer need the absolute values, nice, times the derivative of the inner function. Well, the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. Okay, then we have minus uh, natural logarithm, so 1 over x squared minus 1, no longer need the absolute values, multiplied by the derivative of the inner function, which is 2x. Okay, let's go back and do some simplifying. This would become y prime over y equals one third. Uh, this stays the same, just one over x. We have minus sine x over cos x. And then we have minus two x over x squared minus one. Okay, so all we have to do now is uh, isolate the y prime. So we get y prime equals, let's multiply both sides by y. So instead of being 1 over 3, it would now be y over 3, or you could put 1 over 3y. Let's do it that way, 1 over 3y. Uh, this would still be 1 over x minus sine over cos. Well, that's the same as 10x, and this is just going to stay the same. And finally, the last thing we need to do is the annoying step. Where it says y, we have to write down the original question. So if we look back up here, we've got to write all of this without the absolute values, right? We don't need to put the absolute values in the final answer. So this would be uh, what we put for y right there. So we get y prime equals one third times y, which is the cube root of x cosine x divided by x squared minus one. And then multiplied by all of this, we don't have to change anything here. One over x minus 10x minus 2x over x squared minus 1. Another horrendous but doable derivative. Okay, last one. It's actually a fast one, so don't worry, we're almost done. Uh, y equals x to the sine x. Um, and then we say x is greater than 0. The reason we have this here is so we can actually use logarithmic differentiation without having to worry about what I did up here with the absolute values and everything. So you don't really have to worry about this. This one looks deceptively easy. It seems like we could use a chain rule or something right away, but it's actually not easy at all. Like we know how to take the derivative of x and x squared and x to the fourth and x to the negative one and x to the one third, but how do you do x to the sine x? Hmm, tricky. However, if you have a, something like this, a situation like this, uh, using logarithmic differentiation is easy. So let's try it. Let's take the natural logarithm of both sides. And this is an exponent. So what can we do? We can scuttle it down to the front. So we would have sine x times natural logarithm of x. That's times, right? Those two pieces. And then we take the derivative of both sides, implicit differentiation. So on this side, we're going to have 1 over y, but it is implicit, so it's going to be y prime. And what are we going to have to do over here? We're going to have to use the product rule. So we have our two pieces. I like to take the derivative of the first one. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. And then I write the second one, which is natural logarithm of x. Plus, I rewrite the first one sine x, and I take the uh, derivative of the second one, that's just going to be 1 over x. So what I have is, let's do two steps at once here, y prime equals, I'm going to multiply both sides by y, right, to isolate that y, so I'm going to have y times cos x, natural logarithm of x, plus sine x over x. And the last thing you have to do where it says y here, I just rewrite what it says right there. So y prime equals x to the sine x times, I'll do square bracket, why not? Cosine x times natural logarithm x plus sine x over x. And that's it. Nothing really that difficult there. But if you didn't, really, didn't try using the logarithmic differentiation, that's going to be extremely difficult to do. Maybe not possible. And with that, we're done.